Hello everybody and welcome back to her story. To her story. I am Bacter. And we are digging deeper into this mystery. So we got a couple suggestions from last time as to what to search for. And the first one uh, is to search for the full name of the person. So that would be Simon Smith. And uh, oh, there's only one entry for that. So this is an example of the time when uh, a session may actually... It, we were more specific, but... Simon. Simon Smith. Yeah. Uh, we can cancel out of videos early there. So um, searching for some things may not actually be informative, and that was one instance. We didn't get any new information there. So uh, let's see what next. We have holiday. She mentioned something about a holiday. And look at that. We get a new clip. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. I'll probably try to um, t to list a little bit of the outfits and times that we see. So just note that that was a different one from before. Maybe we'll even talk about some of the search terms, and that will help us come up with theories. Anyway, so they were having a baby at some point. Um, so that was one holiday we were talking about. Rome was another. And no, that one again uh, is only... Only the one thing there. So, uh, we know that Simon Smith was an artisanal glass maker for Ernst Brothers Glass. So first, let's try Ernst Brothers. And that's the only one there. Let's try Ernst again. Yes, yet again. And glass. And hey, look at that. A whole uh, panoply. And actually, only five entries found, so we found every glass-related entry. No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. Before what, I wonder? It looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here, though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. So he's apparently somewhat nearsighted, and that got us about his glasses, not necessarily his profession. He wasn't a present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. Mm. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Interesting. So they had a fight about a mirror that he engraved for her. Look, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror and he gave it to me. So this mirror is apparently some somewhat important. She seems a bit insecure about the mirror in some way, although I guess uh, it did precipitate an argument of some kind. Anyway, on we on we rush. No, I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. And that wasn't much at all. She wants a glass of water. Well, that did give us one new piece of information. We know that the two of them were quarreling about something. And we know that in some way a, uh, an artisanal mirror was involved. We actually only had one more uh, suggestion for this time. So let's look into the Rockington Arms, which is a pub where he would go to drink. Let's try the whole phrase at once. And uh, instead of that, let's try... Nope. Uh, try Arms, I guess. <laughs> yeah, same thing again. And uh, let's just try pub at the end. And there's three new things there, so we'll close off with that for today. No, not drugs. I mean, he drinks, but not very much. He goes to the pub and has one or two. Sometimes we go together. He drinks wine with food, but no, nah, he doesn't have any kind of drinking problem. 
Well, that's nice. Uh, we were worried about his drinking before, and at least there she's representing to him as a fairly sober man. That that probably mirrors my own drinking habits. I will have one or two drinks, but uh, never very much at any one time. So I'm on your side, Simon. God, I don't know. Could be anyone. Maybe someone followed him back from the pub. Hmm. But why would he let them in? Doesn't make sense. Well, if she is guilty, she's acting fairly well there. Apparently he was murdered, and uh, my guess would be they asked her, you know, who do you think did it? That's one of the uh, the things which kind of stretches a bit about the game, is they don't actually, you know, tell you what the questions uh, are, only the responses you hear. And even those are fragmented into sentences. So what do we got? Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come in for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diana's a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. Mm. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? I have. I have eaten fennel, and I'm I'm on the side of that other lady who was an excellent cook, because I think neat ingredients are neat. I got my parents a, uh, a cookbook for uh, Christmas, in which uh, somebody got a lot of recipes from Mexico, and one of them requires two cups of ant eggs, which seems to me to be an unlikely recipe to cook. But that's neither here nor there. The plot thickens. We've heard about an argument. We've heard about drinking buddies. We've heard the name of his boss. And we've heard about an argument precipitated by a mirror. So that's the first little uh, story-style update we have. Please uh, comment either on YouTube or in the thread on something awful as to what you think our next search terms would be, and we will solve the mystery of what happened to Simon Smith. Goodbye.